program. What you talking about? The program. The program. Get with the program. Everybody clap to this. Say what? Get with the program. It starts now. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Now, Get With The Program Radio Show is a multicultural, informative, relevant, and entertaining one-hour weekly show offering you a combination of diverse interviews with questions and comments. And as always, we will act as a positive source of information. Now, listen, if you want to be a guest on the show, all you have to do is log into www.getwiththeprogram.biz. Shoot me an email. Leave me a message. You never know. You may have a conversation that we would love to talk about. Or give me a call at 919-255-2757 or call direct 919 919- 665-1118 Again, that's 919-665-1118 Now listen, today we're going to be joining a conversation with Miss Jenny Matthew Wilson Jenny is the CEO and founder of Diamond Inc. Foundation Now the mission of Diamond Inc. Foundation is to develop project solutions matching community needs It seeks to provide and end the domestic violence Now the foundation teaches entrepreneurship skills to low resource communities, solutions, training, and safety resources for violence. Now listen, our topic today is, I'm going to call it solutions for domestic violence. Hello, Miss Jenny, and welcome to the program. Hello, Gary. How are you? And thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. I know you're busy because, you know, you got a lot of stuff going on. You know, and you and I have met before and talked quite a bit. Yes. Okay. So before we get started here, I, I want to, I want to back up a little bit and I want you to tell me a little bit about your organization. Okay, my organization is to help empower women who are victim of domestic violence to get them out of their state of mind. Most women and men who suffer from domestic violence are isolated and they're made to be known. People are tell them that they're not good enough mm-hmm. or they stay in relationships mm-hmm. because the person is a provider for them and they feel like they have to take care of their kids or they have a language barrier, they're here from another country mm-hmm. and they don't have a way to get out. My way is to help them get out. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. So this organization, you kind of kind of stay in the loop and, and kind of watch these things. Now, people come to you or you kind of just... I have referral from my doctors mm-hmm. and some people come to me because they hear about me and they hear about what I do for my job as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I do want to ask you, What motivated you to start this organization? Okay, well, my mom was a victim of domestic violence with my father, Mm -hmm. and she moved us away from West Africa. Um, And then I experienced domestic violence myself, not so much physical, but I was raped. I trusted a friend, and he raped me. And so at one point, I felt like it was my fault. And I was going through all the emotions, mm-hmm. and I realized it wasn't my fault. Mm-hmm. I didn't cause that to happen. That mm-hmm. person took advantage of me. Mm-hmm. And I just feel so strong and passionate about letting women know that you do have a right. You know, no is no, and you don't have to stay in the situation, but nobody has the right to put your hands on you. Right. I don't care what the situation is. God give you two feet, walk away. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. So wh- wh- to my audience today, we're actually having a conversation with Miss Jenny, Jenny Matthews Wilson, and she is, has been a victim of domestic violence, and she just mentioned that she had been raped. So just that alone is a, a very, very striking situation that most definitely affect you mentally, Go take you through some mental changes. What kind of mental, mental effects did that have on you? Um, I was afraid of going places. I just had to, I had to take my power back. And when I mean take your power back, you have to be able to say to yourself that you're going to wake up every day and you're going to make a difference. You're not going to allow somebody else's behavior to become yours or develop a pattern or being the victim. You know, certain places I stopped going Mm. for a while. And when I saw the person, I was so angry, but I was embarrassed also because I was like, how could this happen to me? Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot of people Mm -hmm. and I kept questioning my values and my youth. What did I do to cause this to happen? Why did this person feel like they could do it to me? Mm -hmm. How old were you when this happened? I was 24. 24. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. You were in a, a, an environment. Was this out? Where, where were you at? When I this went happened? to the club 
like I always do with friends. Mm -hmm. And I was drinking a little bit too much. He had put something in my drink. Hmm. And this was somebody that I trusted. So when he was like, Jenny, come with me. I don't want you to drive. And I follow him, which I wasn't coherent enough to drive. But I follow him. And when I got to his place, he pulled out a gun on me. And he raped me. And it was raining outside. And I was like messing with my phone. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my daughter's calling me. I got to go. Mm -hmm. I got to go. And that's how I was able to get away. Mm. You know, and when I confronted him a couple of years back, he was like, oh, I didn't know that's how you felt. How, what you mean you didn't know that's how I felt? Mm -hmm. That's what you did to me. Mm -hmm. you know? So what I'm hearing, because I, I hear this often in, in nightclubs and in places in different venues where it's not always wise to leave your drink unattended. No, it's not. You know, so I tell people all the time, if you have a drink, keep it with you. Don't mm -hmm. walk away and come back because somebody can easily drop something in your drink. Exactly. I mean, that's and that drink, that's called date rate. Am I correct? It is. Wow. It is. Hmm. So when that happened to you the next day after you realized this had happened, what did you do? Did you decide to call the police? Did you report it? I was so embarrassed because of my job, because I work. I was embarrassed of what other people might have thought about me. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of like just kind of pushed it under the rug. Mm -hmm. And then I started having like emotional breakdown. Mm -hmm. Does this happen to men as well? It does. A lot of men get uh, are abused. They might not be physically abused, but they are mentally abused. Mm -hmm. And the mental abuse lasts the longest because somebody is degrading you. They're telling you that you're not worthy, you know, and your 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 psyche is so powerful. You start believing that, you know, that's why it's important when children are growing up. Not to ridicule them, mm -hmm. not to tell, tell them that they're not going to be anybody because that's also a form of abuse. Mm. So that is when, when you degrade your child, that is a, a feeling right then that they're nothing. So that could very well lead them to the streets or lead them out into this type of environment where yes. all type of things can happen. to Yes. Them. Now, um, when it comes to violence, um, how does drug abuse and alcoholism affect this domestic violence thing? Does it play a big role in it? Often? It does. And once again, like I said, it all goes back to the person's physical state of mind. If you think that you're not worthy and you psych yourself up because people have told you this your whole life, you know, as any drugs, you're going to take something to feel better, to get over the pain. A lot of women who... Um, have domestic violence issues or are victim of domestic violence they take to drinking mm -hmm. they take to drugs they take to over being promiscuous you know it, is, it seemed crazy but uh, you have a lot of women it's like they act the role mm -hmm. you know because they want to forget about what happened to them now when this happened to you did you share this with anyone did you, i mean any of your friends did you share i didn't this? share with anybody so you've kept this in for i how? kept it in for a long time and then one of my friends one of my closest friends i told her about it and mm -hmm. she was like well you need to go ahead and report it and i was still ashamed mm -hmm. the fact that okay i work in a prison how would people look at me mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i should know better mm -hmm. you know and so that's why I'm so passionate about trying to get law passed, mm -hmm. trying to get law passed, trying to make people pay for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Because you, this happens so frequently and a lot of people don't talk about it. It happens all the time. Now, I, I've heard that also this, it, this happens in families, too. Because yes. I, I know some people that has come on my show before and talked about a, a rape being inside of their family. Mm -hmm. Family members raping family members. Yes. That do exist. Have you heard of that? Yes. A lot of family members, you know, would touch their nieces and nephew. Boys are not excluded. You know, that's why it's important to always pay attention to your children. If your child is telling you something, you need to believe them. Mm -hmm. Don't push them away and say they don't know what they're talking about. They do know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to take a break here in a few minutes here. Now, I do want to ask you, are there signs that violence will escalate to murder when things like this happen? Is it a way that a person can kind of identify 
uh, and what to look for when you think this person, this type of person is uh, in your presence. So I'd like to hear that from you. Now that this has happened to you, are there things that we can look for? Listen, what we're going to do before we answer that, we're going to take a break. Okay. When we come back, I want to ask you that question. Are there things that we should look for to be able to identify if this person is of that character? Okay. Okay, listen, this is Gary Jones, Get With The Program Radio Show. We're going to be right back after this. Hello and welcome back to Give It The Program Radio Show. Again, I'm your host, Gary Jones. Now, today we're joining a conversation with Miss Jennifer Matthew Wilson today in the studio with me. And she has been a person of domestic violence and a person who has been raped. So we are having a wonderful conversation. Jennifer, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Now, before we took the break, I, I wanted to ask you, now that you've experienced that and you weren't paying attention to the signs of this person, mm-hmm. so now... What is it that a woman can look for in the presence of a person that may act in a certain way of having tensions of raping them? Okay, one of the signs, um, people never look at you in the eye. That's the first sign. They're very fidgetive about who they are. You know, they they try to hide who they are. And another thing is, if that person is cussing random people out and calling them out of their names and stuff and trying to be nice to you, just know that you're going to be that next person. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of people, I call it... Um, the representative. I call when you meet somebody, you meeting the representative. You're not really meeting who that person are. When they start acting a certain kind of way or telling you, sit down, do this, do that, and they be being very towards it over you and they don't even know you, that's the first sign you need to look for. And if you meet somebody, get their information, look them up. If you need help, call me and I'll look them up for you. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of people out here that's, you know, they looking for somebody to be a victim. Mm-hmm. Do not be a victim. Mm-hmm. Do mm-hmm. not share your personal information. Do not let people know where you live at. Do not let people know who your family are. Mm-hmm. Until you get to know that person for yourself. And I definitely agree with that because uh, often I see people get in relationships and, and even get married before they even know the history of that family. Because mm-hmm. sometimes there's a such thing I've heard of generational curses where it could be a situation in the family where a family could have a history of having rapists in their family. Mm-hmm. And so it is important to, to know the family history. Am I correct? Yes. Now, when it comes to domestic violence now we're talking about now we know the the, the rape situation mm-hmm. domestic violence we're talking about beating someone you talking about beating somebody and making the person feel like it's their fault you and it all goes back to isolation if i take you away from your loved ones then you don't have anybody that you can rely upon what a person that um commit domestic violence does they'll take you to isolate you I have a co-worker. She worked with me every day. I didn't know this was what she was going through until she finally moved in with me. And her ex, you know, he came over to my house and he threatened her. And I told him, I said, well, if you come over here, we're going to have some problems. Mm -hmm. You know, he backed down because I stood up to him. Mm -hmm. People who commit crimes or abusive, they don't like when people stand up to them. Mm -hmm. They're inferior of somebody standing up to them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, you know, my question I always have when it comes to women who have been in domestic violent relationships, violent relationships, why do they go back? I mean, you, you get women and they get beat. They, some of them, they, they, they fight and, and the man may beat them down, but yet they'll go back. Now, is that love or no, is that just it's, foolishness? It's, I wouldn't say foolishness. It's more of their mental psyche. Or let, or let me interject. Is it love or lust? No, it's feeling that you need somebody when you don't when you feel work when you feel like you don't have anything mm-hmm. and this person's been there for you and they telling you that you're not gonna be nothing nobody wants you it's a mind game that they play with you mm-hmm. you know you put your whole trust in this person and some women believe that they can change a person you cannot change somebody who is abusive. Mm. The only change that's going to be made is you're going to be dead. Now, do you think that counseling helps? It does. Mm -hmm. It really does. But the person has to be the one to want to get out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the counseling, you can give a person all the counseling in the world. But until they are ready to make that change for themselves, Mm -hmm. it's going to be very hard. If you see these signs in a person that perhaps may be an abuser, Mm -hmm. should you immediately say something to them or should you try to do research on them or should you just leave them alone just leave them alone Mm -hmm. 
Just don't even involve yourself with them. Wow. So what I'm hearing is trying to change someone is out of the question. No, because it's um it's a learned behavior. Abuser learn how to abuse from the way they was raised. If you grew up in a household and you witnessed your father slapping your mother around and your mother never fought back, you you th- you tend to believe that this is how this is how you show love. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, so it's like it's like you said a generational curse, mm-hmm. but it starts when they're young. Just like a rapist, it starts when they're young. Somebody had to do something to that individual for them to have their mindset. For wow. the thing that it's okay for them to do that. Somebody had to be very possessive. Like, okay, so you witness your father being possessive with your mom. And as a child, you know, you start demonstrating those behaviors with the opposite. Telling people to shut up, sit down. Mm-hmm. You know, you become very disrespectful. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of young men d- that don't respect their mothers or don't care for women, that's because they witness that. And a lot of young mm-hmm. women... A lot of young women that don't have their father in their life tend to deal more towards those type of men because they don't know what a real man is. Mm. Oh, they don't understand how to be treated by a person. Mm-hmm. So they just, you know, because, oh, he's showing me attention, so he must love me. Mm. He hit me, so he must love me. They don't understand the true concept of love. That's not love. That's not love. That's right. being abused. Right. When when you were raped, when this happened to you, mm-hmm. and, you know, some time had gone by, did it affect you dating other men? It did. I didn't want to be bothered with anybody. And, you know, growing up as a child, like I said, my mom and my dad went through a lot. My dad was abusive with my mom. And growing up, I used to have daddy issues. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, a lot of people say, what is a daddy issue? Like I said before, a young girl looked to her father for guidance and a young man looked to his mother for guidance. So I didn't know how to determine if somebody loved me or not. So I would talk to different people, you know, thinking, that, oh, this person liked me. Oh, I'll talk to them. This person liked me. I'll talk to them. But that changed my outlook on people. And I... I look at everybody, I treat everybody with this long spoon. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't really trust a lot of people. It, it keeps me from trusting. Mm-hmm. And I used to trust everybody. Now I don't. Now, I often hear that if you're in a relationship and you, you experience a slap mm-hmm. or a, a hit, is that a sign that you should go ahead and leave that man right then? Because I hear people say if it, if it happens once, it's going to happen it's gonna again. It's going to happen again. If you don't stop it when it happens, it's going to happen again. Somebody's telling you they're sorry. They're not sorry because they had to think about the process before they did it. When they did it and you didn't say anything about it, you pretty much gave them permission to do it again. Hmm. Cause they, it's not a it's not a consequence. When they did it the first time, they didn't suffer a consequence. Mm-hmm. You know, they just said I'm sorry and you went along with it. So they feel like they can do it anytime they want to. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna go anywhere. Right, right. So I often wonder why when someone goes through a, a domestic violence situation. Why don't they immediately bring the law into it? As you said, because they're shame. They're shame and they're afraid. You know, you have to remember a lot of people who are in domestic violence situation have young children. You know, the person's crazy. They say they're gonna kill you. And a lot of times, when you go in to the police station and you get restraining orders, that's just a piece of paper. Unless you tend to move out of the state. Or change your whole family name or whatever, mm-hmm. that person can still find you if they want to. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're the type of person to stay on social media. Mm-hmm. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take another break here and um, okay. I'm gonna reach out to some of my commentary guests. But the question when I come back, I'm gonna ask you is it important to do a criminal background check on people? Yes, uh, it is. Uh, and we're gonna talk about that when we come back. Right now, uh, once again, we're joining the conversation today with Miss Jenny D., uh, Matthew Wilson, and she has been uh, sexually abused through her life and and now she's uh she's definitely uh, being an advocate for women who go through domestic violence but listen we're gonna take a break we're gonna reach out to steve Rao. steve Rao, uh what's going on in your world well gary it's great to be here and the american people are very excited about president joe biden's
Biden's Infrastructure and American Jobs Plan. He announced this month a sweeping $2 trillion infrastructure and jobs package that looks to reshape the American economy and make the most significant domestic U.S. investments in generations. This plan includes spending to repair aging roads and bridges, jumpstart transit projects, rebuild school buildings and hospitals, and it will also expand electric vehicles. He's calling for 500,000 electric vehicles charging stations. He's also going to invest $300 billion in manufacturing, research and development, and creating new jobs in the clean economy, another $400 billion to help per- care for our elderly. When it's all said and done, this plan is bold, Gary, and it's investing in jobs today, jobs in our future, and our infrastructure in America, which we need to catch up with to compete with the rising superpower of China. All right, thank you, Steve Rao. Appreciate that commentary, my man, Steve Rao. Listen, we're going to take a break here. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back after this. Hey, listen, I'm Gary Jones, host and producer of Get With The Program Radio Talk Show. you listen to the talk show at its best. Don't touch that dial. We keep our ear to the community, so don't touch that dial. We got more coming right here on Get With The Program Radio Talk Show. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show again. I'm your host, Gary Jones. Now, today we're joined in a conversation with Miss Jenny Matthew Wilson. Jenny is the CEO and founder of Diamond Inc. Foundation. The mission of Diamond Inc. Foundation is to develop project solutions matching community needs. It seeks to provide an end to domestic violence. The foundation teaches entrepreneurship skills to low resource communities, solutions, training, and safety resources for violence. And today our topic is solutions for domestic violence. We're just basically having a warm conversation here and pretty much surrounding the experience that Jenny went through. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having now, me. Absolutely. Before we took the break, I, uh, I asked you, do you think it's very important uh, for someone to do a background check on an individual that they are getting involved with? And, I, and also, I want to ask you, how soon should they do that? Should they do that right after the first date or should they just wait if they feel like they're going to go further into the relationship? If they seem interested in you, you know, give it a chance. But if they start asking, being very demanding, you know, telling you when you asking you question like, where are you going? Where are you going to be home? Who are you with? Those are signs that, yeah, you need to go ahead and do a background check on them. Get to know whoever that you're going to be talking to. Because the one thing you don't want to do is to bring them around your family. I hear you say prison a couple of times and quite a bit here. But see, I, I do know that there's people who ain't in prison who out here hasn't been caught yet. Yes. So there's a lot of them going on, too. So we got to be careful because they are here. But to, just because they're not in prison, if mm-hmm. they have done it before, mm-hmm. they have a record. They have a record. They have got a record. It. Got it. Right. And, and so I also would say there's some people walking around out here who, who are not who, who are doing it and hadn't got caught yet. It's amazing. Now, what would you say would be the the effects of the child? That, that see this because you didn't mention you did mm-hmm. touch on that because we got ahead of the conversation but you did touch on that so if a child sees this a lot in their home n- most likely it's probably going to affect them too as well it's going to affect them they become a product of their environment they either become the abuser or they're the, they're the abusee okay so you have you have children i have children okay all right so your are your children aware of what happened to you my daughter is, and she shared with me that something similar happened to her mm. when I told her. And mm. it was um, shocking for me because I never had anybody around my children. Mm-hmm. So when she started dating, and she and I, after I told her, and then she confided in me and told me. So mm. I, I, I could imagine that there's probably a lot of uh, women who have been uh, sexually abused and, mm-hmm. and will not bring it up or share it. Yes. And and I think that's sad, you know, uh, that it happens because that's a serious situation. It's a very serious situation. Now, how can somebody get in contact with you if they want to talk to you? How can they get in contact with just just to have just to have a conversation? You can reach me at 919-986-4887. That's the Diamond Inc. Foundation I do ask to see people by appointments only Mm -hmm. just for your safety in case if somebody's looking for you or trying to harm you. That way they won't be able to know, you know, the time that you're coming in because I have the keys. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the number again? It's 919-986-4887. I heard you just mention about stalkers, so that's that's another situation. Now, do you think it's important to get, res- like you said, restraining orders? Do they work? It's important to get restraining orders. You need to have a trail. You need to have paper trail. Hmm, okay. 
And the reason why paper trail is so important in North Carolina, if it's not written down, it didn't happen. If you don't document it, say if somebody attack you and you mistakenly kill them, Mm -hmm. as long as you have those documentations, Mm -hmm. you'll be in a better position to say that you were trying to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that paper trail, you know, anybody can say anything. You know, you want to make sure you cover your tracks. You want to make sure you protect yourself. Mm -hmm. At first, I wasn't big on gun violence and stuff like that, but I am big on pepper spray, and I make sure I give that to everybody. (laughs) That's a good... I I remember you gave me some. I still have that, too. When we first met, you said, Gary, you gave me a gift bag, and some of that was in there. Yes. Wow, thank you so much. You know, it's always good to have that. Now, uh, I want to rewind back. Um, because you, you're a mother, parent, and with a daughter that you said experienced a, mm-hmm. a situation such as this. When that happened, what did you do? Did you confront the individual? What did you do? Did you do she didn't about? tell me who the individual was, mm-hmm. but I just spoke to her about it, and I told her that she can always come to me no matter what. You mm-hmm. know, she felt like it was her fault. She felt like she was with friends. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't really have a lot of friends. So I guess the people that she was with, you know, she thought they were being able to protect her, but they didn't. Now, I do want to ask you this. I hear this a lot, too. The word no. When a woman says no, no it means, means no. no. Right. It means no. OK, so when, when it doesn't mean maybe it, it doesn't means mean no. it means no, it means no stop. Yes. And if a man or a woman goes beyond that, that's a problem. That's a problem. Mm. They just violated you. Mm, wow. That's true. Now. Based on your experience, and I know that this happened to you, do men, do you hear a lot about men getting raped? Yes. We live in a society where we deal with a lot of homosexualities and stuff like that, and people would try to hide it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do experience that. Mm -hmm. And men do experience domestic violence from women that are bigger than them, Mm -hmm. that, you know, because they're not a physical person to get into altercation Mm -hmm. or they're not raised to fight the individual, they tend to be more aggressive towards them if they're not doing what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Like I know I, I often refer back to one of Eddie Murphy's uh, 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 comedy. I think it was I think it was Raw when Eddie, Eddie mentioned that. <laughs> Eddie mentioned that. Times are changing. Yes. Women, women are exercising now. Women are doing aerobics. They're lifting weights. Women were... Mm-hmm. Fight back now. Women will beat you. You know, they will, Mm -hmm. you know, it's different now. So it ain't the same back in the days when, you know, uh, Eddie said, when a man hit a woman, she goes away and cry and get away with it. But Mm -hmm. now it's different now. Women are fighting back. Yeah, you have a lot of women that are fighting back. Wow, man. But I often ask the question. I love to ask this question here. Women get in arguments and get beat by a man, but they go back. Over and over again. And I find some women like that. Some women, I've, I've, I've heard that they, they don't mind. They love this person. And you'd be wondering, why do you go back? And then they get in a new relationship. If this man that they meet in a new relationship is a real man that's not into violence and fighting, then perhaps there's a possibility that she may just be used to getting beat. Now, how do you think that's going to affect the nice guy? Well, you know, like I said before, it's a mental thing. Mm-hmm. You know, she suffered a trauma. When you suffer trauma, it's hard for you to get over that. She's been conditioned to believe that the only way that somebody's going to show her love if they slapping her around, which is not true. Mm -hmm. You know, she's never experienced love. So this is what she equates to love. Mm. So you have to get her into counseling and get her her mind change, mm-hmm. you know, get her to believe in who she is and not what a man can do for her. A lot of women who suffer domestic violence or in relationship because they don't have the means to take care of themselves mm, or wow. take care of their family or the person is saying that if you take my children, I'm going to kill you or I'm going to kill the children. So a lot of women sit there and take the abuse because they want their children to have a better life or they're afraid or what their spouse or mates might do to them. Mm. Good information. 
Jenny, we're going to take another break right here. Once again, we're joining the conversation today with Miss Jenny D, um, Matthew Wilson, and we're having a conversation. She's been a victim of domestic violence and rape, and she's sharing her information, her conversation with us, real talk. And we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back. But right now, we're going to reach out to Ursula Camille and Comedian Gravedigger. What's going on in your world? Good day, Gary. Here's a highlight in black history. James Edward Macio West was born February 10th, 1931 in Farmville. Prince Edward County, Virginia. He is an African-American inventor and acoustician who holds over 250 foreign and U.S. patents for the production and design of microphones and techniques for creating polymer foil electrics. As a scientist at Bell Laboratories in 1962, he co-invented the foil electric microphone with his research partner Gerard Sessler while developing instruments for human hearing research. The foil electric microphone is a type of condensed microphone, which is mostly used today, such as in telephones, sound and music recording equipment, hearing aids, camcorders, and baby monitors. After retiring from Bell in 2001, he joined John Hopkins University as a research professor of electrical and computer engineering and mechanical engineering. His research at John Hopkins includes efforts to improve teleconferencing technology by transmitting stereophonic sound over the internet and new transducers. In 2021, he is still an active inventor working on a device to detect pneumonia in infant lungs. This concludes today's highlight in black history. Oh yeah, I definitely got to thank Ursula Camille for bringing us the moments of black history, things that have happened, inventions that have gone on with African Americans. But now listen, I'm going to reach out to Grave Digger, comedian Grave Digger, tell me what's going on in your world. Look here, people will tell you anything, especially doctors, you know, and uh, I, I want to share this tidbit of information for my, my brothers and my sisters because we the only one that, that has this. If a doctor tells you that you are borderline diabetic, ask him which side of the border you on because there is no such thing as borderline diabetes. It's either you got it or you don't. That's like telling a woman she's just a little bit pregnant. It's like, what part is the little bit? You know what I'm saying? But just share some knowledge. You know, great that you got the GED. He ain't all that smart. But sometimes I just sit around and think about stuff. So if the doctor tells you you borderline, then you need to go ahead and see another doctor and go and get your metformin. But this grave, just sharing a little knowledge for you this morning. I'm signing out. Peace. You have a good one, dear. Later. Hello and welcome back to Get With The Program Radio Show. Again, I'm your host, Gary Jones. Now, today we're joining a conversation with Miss Jenny Matthew Wilson. Jenny is the CEO and founder of Diamond Inc. Foundation. The mission of Diamond Inc. Foundation is to develop project solutions, matching community needs. It seeks to provide an end to domestic violence. Now, the foundation teaches entrepreneurship skills to low-resource communities. Now, solutions, training, safety, and resources uh, for violence. Now, today our topic is solutions for domestic violence. And we're just basically having a good, warm conversation. Hello, Jenny, and welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me again. Before we took the break, I wanted to ask you again, um, when it comes to depending on someone to take care of you, uh, what's the connection of that? When someone is taking care of you, paying the bills, uh, does that put you in a connection of being in a domestic violence situation? It puts you... At being hopeless because you feel like you don't have any, you cannot make any decision without that person. And I encourage everyone that's in the situation to get out of it as fast as they can. Learn to depend on yourself. Once you start gaining that, gaining that independence, you know, you start feeling better about yourself. Mm -hmm. And then that way you won't allow someone else to have that much power over you. Mm. You know, like I said before, it goes back to isolation. The person, yeah, it seems nice, oh, to have someone to take care of you. But if the person is telling you where to go, when to come back, where to leave, who you're talking to, who you can be around, who you cannot be around, that is a form of control. That's a lot of power. Yes. So what I'm hearing that it's best to have your own. Be it's independent. best to have your own and be independent. Be independent. What What about the women who are actually out here and some men who are out here seeking people to use in a situation like that? That's very dangerous as well, right? Yes, it is. I want to ask you when someone is in a bad relationship and the relationship is dangerous and the, the female has come to realize that this person that she's involved with is crazy, mm -hmm. you know, and probably beating her. And she's keeping it hid. Is it safe for her to bring her family in, involved with this? Yes, it is. It's, it's always good to ask for help. It's always good to reach out. 
Because sometimes people don't know what you're going through, especially if you're not telling them. The only time people can know what's going on with you if they see the abuse. They see you, your body's bruised up, and then they start asking questions. Do not lie for, your per- for the person that you with. Do not cover it up because you want to save your own life. Cause you might you might be okay today, but tomorrow you might not be okay. Often, in some time in life where we have family members, we have to be careful who we select as a family member because some family members will react very quickly. And bringing family into it is is to me it's a it's a it's a double catch situation, uh, you know, because you can bring family into it, they could get hurt or they could save you. So should we be selective who we tell? Well, most abusers are cowards. Most abusers are not going to fight a man. They don't want anybody to know that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's the sole purpose of keeping you isolated. Mm -hmm. So if you have a strong family member that you can call so they can get in their faces and let them know to stay away from you. Sometimes that's a good thing. If mm-hmm. not, then reach out to the police officer, mm-hmm. you know, because most of the time if you say I'm going to call the police and they know they have issues, you know, they have domestic violent issues. Mm-hmm. They don't want their job to know that they have domestic violent issues. So always think about your safety first. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about what the other person's going to think. Don't worry about what you feel like your mate's going to do because he's not worrying about you. Mm, right exactly he could care less about you he doesn't want you to tell anybody because he wants to come around as being the, oh he's so nice and when he's not mm-hmm. so basically that, those are some of the solutions basically it's, it's, it's reach out tell reach someone out. reach out don't keep it to yourself reach out well and, and you know people go a long time in life without telling but often they don't reach out because again as you mentioned and they're afraid to reach out and that's a bad thing. You know, I often, I often tell people all the time, if you have a situation where you are afraid of a person that's in your life, then you're with the wrong people. Exactly. I want to go back on your situation when you was raped. Let's go back when that happened. Your night. Let's take it from there. Okay. My night was a typical night. I went out to the club with some friends. And the person I was with, the person who did the rape me, it was someone that I knew for years. So I never suspected him even liking me like that. I always look up to him like a brother, you know. And so when I found myself being like, don't know where I'm at, not coherent to where I was at, you know, my vision was blurry. So this was a guy, you weren't there dating was, this guy. This, I wasn't he's dating just, this guy. Friend. This was just a friend that I knew from the club scene that I knew for years, mm-hmm. you know, and I looked at him like a brother, you know, I never looked at him in any other type of way, you know. So when he was like, okay, Jenny, I'm going to, I'm come, come with me. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, he's looking out for my best interest because I, I'm not able to drive. I don't know what's going on because my, my vision was very blurry you know, and it was raining outside, and but I was able. I follow him, you know, just by driving with the lights, which was dangerous. But I follow him. When I got to his place, I was still out of it. You know, I was still out of it. All I remember is that he forced himself on me, and he showed me his gun, and he raped me. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and I can still pick. I can still see everything that happened, even from today. Mm-hmm. I just grabbed my phone and kept messing with it so it could hit the ring button. And I said, oh, I got to go. I got to go. And Mm -hmm. I I grabbed my stuff and got in my car Mm -hmm. and just left. Mm -hmm. And I pulled over and I was just in tears in the rain. I felt like I couldn't call anybody Mm -hmm. because I was so embarrassed Mm -hmm. that I allowed that to happen to me because I'm always the type of person that stay on top of everything. And you were you were. You said you was in your 20s when this happened. I was in my 20s. So this wasn't like your first time with the man. This was, No. Okay, so this no. wasn't this wasn't your virginity uh-uh. things like that. Okay. No. Wow. Now, after that, you went back home. You marinated over there for a while, and you couldn't, really didn't understand what had just happened. I, so, couldn't, I couldn't process so it. So when did you see this person again? I saw him a couple of years later at the gym, and... I was just so angry, you know, like I wanted to take a barbell and hit him upside the head with it. I was just visioning all these things. I was still embarrassed 
that this person actually did this to me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. until I start talking to my friend um, and she started encouraging me to talk more about it. Mm -hmm. And the more I talked about it, the better I was able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So being that you're here on the show today, what message are you trying to get out? Because you, you want people to hear about this. And, and based on your experience, what message do you, are you trying to, to get out? Always use the buddy system. If you're going out with a friend, go out with a friend. If you go to the bathroom, go with y'all go together. Always use the buddy system. Do not go out by yourself. Do not lay your drink down and get to know your surroundings, mm -hmm. you know, because you, you can't trust anybody, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, and trust is a that's a big trust big is a very big word. And when I say trust, I mean Unless this is your mom or your dad, do not go with anybody. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you, make sure you know that all your base are covered because you don't want this to happen to you. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when people call you for, for your counseling, your services, what are some of the what's, what you've heard has been a tragic situation that touched you emotionally? A lot of people are running for their lives. You know, they, they're leaving in the middle of the night with their kids. And my company is fairly new, mm -hmm. so I'm still working on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I have partners with different companies, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're going to send somebody for you. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get you in a secure environment that nobody's going to know where you're at. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing, there is, there is help and there is hope. There's help and there's hope. There's always hope. Wonderful. Miss Jenny D. Wilson, it's been a wonderful show. Thank you today for being here. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for helping me. Yep. To Absolutely. help other people. Absolutely. Once again, today we're joining a conversation with Miss Jenny and Matthew Wilson. Jenny is the CEO and founder of Diamond Eaton Foundation. Now, the mission of Diamond Eaton Foundation is to develop project solutions matching community needs. Now, it seeks to provide an end to domestic violence. The foundation teaches entrepreneurship skills to low-resource community solutions, training, and safety resources for violence. Today, we had a wonderful conversation and pretty much basically hearing Jenny's story and how she feels about solutions for domestic violence because she's experienced it and she's been through it. And it's always wonderful and good to hear a person who has actually experienced something because a lot of people talk about it. But if you've never gone through it, then it's very very hard for you to be able to uh, deliver the message. Once again, Jenny, thank you so much for being here, right? Thank you so much. All right, once again, you listen to Get With The Program Radio Show. I'm your host, Gary Jones. As I always say, stay positive, keep your head up, and remember to Get With The Program. What you talking about? The Program. The Program. Get With The Program. Everybody clap to this. Starts now. Yeah. Yeah.